Hey, it's Mark. I was just listening to the NVIDIA conference call, and they had a really good, another good quarter, and things are still going really well for NVIDIA. Yeah, I posted that, some of the, some of the highlights on my, on my Twitter, on my X account. The uh, revenue beat, uh, EBITDA beat, and EPS beat. They beat by 70 cents on the bottom line. And some of these numbers are just crazy. Well, the, I was looking at the year over year here at the bottom and uh, it looks like 3000 basis points. And uh, well, actually the percentages make more sense, I guess, if you look at the percentages here. So they, they basically, he talked about they're gonna, their supply chain's still accelerating. So they think they can keep up the data center growth just with the supply chain. And they're really talking up their enterprise business too. So they think that's gonna be a, a, a good grower. So that's, that's kind of what I took away from the NVIDIA call. They're, bullish on the enterprise and and they still see the growth on um, being able to maintain <clears throat> so it's pretty amazing like you know a lot of people were doubting 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 the the company last year or well this year really after the the major run it had but you can see the 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 generative ai is not a fad it's it's going to be around you know for forever really and so it's they're right in the center of that and and they've got a lot of other you know other ventures too like they like i might just read the quarterly or the annual report sometimes to see exactly how many companies they own because they i know they they take a lot of interest or like a lot of minority stakes and and uh and companies too so they may be like they're probably like one of the best holding companies almost for for like ai too like a generative ai industry so some of the some of the stocks I was looking at yesterday, they uh, they panned out the shorts ones, the edit the like it didn't have another run day, which is fine. So that's probably the top for a while. At least uh, it's gonna flag. It looks like it's gonna flag here, but it's an inside bar day, so these can be tricky nowadays. Like. You know, if it doesn't, if it breaks out again, obviously, if it goes near like 1080, it's uh, off the table as a as a short. But if this thing goes below 10, 10, 10 a share, ten dollars a share, it's for sure. It's for sure a short now, and that's the setup. If it breaks down from this from this point here, below the low of day yesterday, it was or today. Today the low is 10.09, so yeah, if it hits like 10.08, 10.07, it's a short, or I made do puts on that, but I found some other stuff too, so it's not really the best, it's not really, it's not technically a supernova, so it's really not a good setup at this point, like it would have been better if it went to all the way back up to resistance, like it went up to that level there that it's had. Cause that's the, that's the level. So, I mean, it, it very well may just flag out here and keep going, but I think there's a, there's a trade tomorrow, you know, if it breaks down. And when I was listening to the NVIDIA quarter, I was remembering this, this other data center, this uh, NTNX, they had some rumor, they had some rumors of a buyout like a couple of years ago or a year ago. And this stock's done incredibly well and it's the relative strength's been really good all year. You know, even with this even with the sell offs in the market, um and tech, it's been really strong. And my hunch is, you know, that's that's got something to do with uh, being like a target. So I mean you see this that trend level, it's just it's still hold held that uptrend level for a long time since summer. And it's basically breaking out again, you know, 
one more day it's the clear breakout so uh, I may look at these calls too but I gotta kind of prioritize my setups here so I'm I'm kind of doing this video as I'm as I'm you know looking through some things but I already went through some scans and so a lot, I went through a bunch of charts about in the past like hour so I'm ready to to present some of these and the the other one the PRDO it was down too but I mean the market's red so it wasn't really much of a day but it did follow through off of that gap down scan which was my this was like one of my top watches from the gap down scan yesterday and the other one that was down was the LAZR. I got the puts on this one. I bought some really out of the money puts. I got the the $2 strike for like January, the end of January. And uh, this one's been down too. You know, this has been another one of my good ideas for shorts. And I've just been in and out of puts on this one too for a while. I think I got I got chopped up on some of the decay here like like a month ago, but but yeah, this one's been consistent too. I mean, you look at the weakness, it's kind of like, it's got that look of a stock that's just uh, going to have some more trouble coming because it's, you know, it has a lot of weeks where it's just down every day, like back here, you know, it's just down, down. And you see that's when the short sellers are in control and or there's just people dumping, you know, there's just somebody dumping every day. I mean, you look at the volume, it's a lot of sell volume. So this one's still a good short. I mean, I might even buy some more puts on this because it's, and you look at the volume, the high sell volume on these days, and plus it's breaking down. It's a pretty, it's still a good good, good short side setup. Well, surprisingly, one of the only few stocks on my watch list that was up was the VFS, the VinFast. It's a, it's a possible squeeze candidate with the high short interest. But, you know, these EV charging companies and EV, EV cars companies haven't been doing so well lately. So we'll see. Like, it's got a level there. You know, if it goes back into the, like, high sixes, like seven bucks, I mean, think can squeeze. But I'm just kind of watching it to see what it does. And the Upwork, this one's interesting, too. Looks like uh, I can see it. You can see it better on another chart here. So we'll look at that one real quick. I just made a list of some of these companies, you know, that did like IPOs that are just kind of what I see is sort of the weaker companies from the last cycle that did IPOs and came out. So this one, this is another one of those kind of, you know, it's like the business models, you know, not uh, super good for a, a weak economy, obviously. So, you can see it's been down, you know, yeah, it had a peak in 2021, uh, double topped in 2021. Um, let's blow it, blow it up a little bit, so see if that helps. Yeah, so double topped back in 2021. And it's rallied, you know, with these market rallies, it looks like. But, like, the thing here is with the market up so much, like, a lot of these weak stocks are up, too. So there's a good opportunity to to put on some puts or get short on these on these um, perennial strugglers. It's like a lot of these companies, you know, they uh, you know they haven't done well the past three years. So what's going to happen if there's actually like a a real economic contraction? You know, where where they're they're their business deteriorates, you know, even more so than um, it has. You know, they're just not, they're not going to do well in that situation, obviously. So, like, uh, you know, like Pelotons and even Way like Wayfair and, you know, all these companies that are kind of like zombie companies almost. So this one's got, um, these moving averages were just on their standard. I don't, I don't look at those. Uh, but the it hit up like it looks like it was gonna do a, it tried to do a little flag there like it tried to do a a flag and then that failed so we got that's the level there and 
it kind of does this or it spikes and then it sells off like last time it spiked up and sold off so i mean that flag is really it was a pretty good looking you know bullish pennant there and then it just went to crap so it's basically a failed signal now where the signal failed so it's even better now on the other on the short side is what that means so we got clear levels there and then boom it broke down today so i think this one's going lower I and mean, i think i don't see why i can go back to 10 bucks so i added, i'm gonna add that as a priority short too so upwork let's put that up at the top and edit not so much i mean there's a trade there i'm not gonna i probably won't trade it tomorrow but i think that one's gonna be red tomorrow too if it doesn't of course if it, if it breaks down if it breaks out you know it's not there's no setup but uh, and the charging stocks are weak again and if you haven't watched my other videos pretty much i'm like a broken record on these and i've been right all year on these the the fundamentals are just deteriorating and i think they're just kind of the they're just gonna catch the worst of this pop in the sentiment on evs you know the it was there was a lot huge you know ev you know bull market for a while and then it kind of faded out a little bit so it's not necessarily going away you know evs aren't going away but they're the sort of you'd say optimism or the the market sentiment on them seems to be shifting this year and um and if tesla has to lower prices that's that tells you a lot too you know like tesla's you know they they shouldn't have to lower prices i mean i mean they this is the nature of a car company but so yeah i'm still in these chpt puts and it's going pretty well right now because it's that was a fake out it looks like I tried to um and i've got i think i've got the weeklies on these and i'm up i'm up about 100 percent. i mean i'm up about um a thousand percent again so i'm gonna hold these and see well i'm just gonna try to get a good exit on some weakness i may even buy some more like if these strikes are liquid you know like in january or february uh I still see like I'm trying to I'm pretty much trying to find reasons why I shouldn't load the boat on all these puts on EV stocks like like CHPT and BLNK like my thesis on that one turned out really good too like I pretty much called the top there so we had that first red day we had, when we got that first red day that was the signal that the little mini squeeze was over so it's just downhill from here i mean it's gonna get up it's gonna try to pop eventually maybe, maybe even tomorrow but but i think this one's coming down you know obviously down to like two bucks again so it's really good entries you know like i can still get some good entries on puts here like i've got i pretty much have one two three i have three different strike puts on these i've got the january three dollar strike puts and i've got the January two dollar strike puts and I've got January three fifty strike puts. No, no, I've got December three fifty. But I want to buy more because I just I'm pretty confident in the in the setup there. I mean I was super confident, like um I could have even bought more, you know, on that first red day. It was pretty obvious that was that first red day was obviously the top, you know, and I, I think it even hit the upper Bollinger band too. Yeah, look at that. See, it was, it printed a red candle above the upper Bollinger Band. And I talked about that, you know, that day on my video. And um, that's kind of the kiss of death for, uh, with that candle there. So, I've got a, some other stocks I was watching, like, well, the, the, the NEO is kind of related. And um, it's still looking weak, too. It looks like it's going to come down. But it's still got a level to test there. And yeah, the EV go. 
I haven't looked at that one in a while. It's kind of just the same, it's trading the same way. And I don't think I have many puts on this one as the other. I think I just have one, I have the $2 strike puts for uh, January. But it's kind of got the same thing going on here. You know, it's got the, that little mini squeeze going. And uh, it's still holding like a trend support there though. So it's not really broken. Like it's got, it's got trend support right there. Like it's just in a channel. So I very well, I think it very well could, you know, break trend support tomorrow. But I'll always wait and see what happens. I might buy some more puts if it breaks, if it breaks this channel. So I looked at some other ones too. I was kind of thinking with everything being up so much that some of the sectors that I'm weakest, that I'm most bearish on, there might be some good opportunities like in these um, office REIT stocks. Like my, this is my office REIT portfolio or watch list here. And um, the ABR is probably looking like the weakest out of all of them. The um, ABR, it's uh, a REIT and uh I don't think it's even, I don't think it's primarily office space, but the, the weakness has been there. It's just, uh, it's basically on 52 week lows now again, or on, well, it's on lows on this down channel. So we got a down channel and yeah, it's looking like it's going to keep going. Uh, some of these other ones are still kind of holding in there. Like one of the other ones, I'll, this is one of my other favorites for short is a uh, Q's. It's right on that trend. It's right on that channel uh, on that major level though. KRC, they all pretty much look the same. So it's kind of interesting that ABR is, has the weakest price action. There's probably something going on there. So I may look at ABR puts um, this week or next week. And uh, my my rig puts came back today because oil was pretty weak today. Like oil just kind of had like a, like a little tiny doji. Just couldn't figure out what I was going to do. And I added, I added this one to my watch list because I think it... I think it had a, uh, a high short interest, but it was up on the day when the market was red. So the, and it can run. So it looked like it's kind of got a base going there. It's got some levels it held. It's gonna hold, it's holding. And the other ones, yeah, the rig, rig was down nice like this. This triangle is still in play. It's still got this descending triangle and the just the bottom just keeps changing. Like that's the bottom now. So probably a couple more days, three days maybe till it figure out figures out where it's gonna go. But I think my puts expire this Friday. Maybe they, I think they might have been December puts, uh, but still a good setup on the short side. And the other, other thing I noticed was these these uranium stocks are still going. Like I totally slept on, I was sleeping on these. The 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 best one was the yeah the UEC. UECs has been breaking out, been uh, breaking out the past uh, couple weeks. And that had something to do with the NAK because NAK is like one of my favorite long setups now uh, off this triangle. Looks like a high flag. It's trying to do a high flag there. It's got a little uh, little high flag going. But these, yeah, these uranium stocks, like this one's coming back to, it's right above um, that major level there. 
so that could hold too. So looks like a lot of volume came in, so it looks pretty good on that side. It could hold that for sure. And the URG, URG is kind of just sideways, but still near highs. DNN, DNN is one of the more bullish ones too. It's looking, it's got a lot of momentum. Like it, it held that level really well there on the earnings day, and then once it held that, it just took off. So that's one of the one of my favorite setups too is when they just really, when they when they bull flag off of a a level. So those are pretty much the one, the interesting ones I saw that were had some of the most bullish action price action at least. Um, CCJ is really strong too. Um, this one's strong too. The UE. Actually, that's pretty remarkably strong. It's got some weird, it prints some weird volume days, but yeah, these uranium stocks look pretty good, like uh, as as an industry. It's still going pretty well for them. So that kind of reminds me, like uh, I was talking about this, I was talking about this setup in the other video, and I totally missed it, like um, the Tesla. Because we did that head and shoulders there, like a bottom, and then it had that clear level there that it that tested off of or tested and held, and then this was the I was talking about yesterday. This was the the bull flag right there, and um, we did two hammers back to back, which was pretty nice, you know. And then of course today it was up like I was thinking it would, and I think it's gonna hit. 255 like I, I debated taking the setup even though I was I was late to it like I saw it, like I, I'm, I came in late um and uh I missed the morning the morning entry so I figured based on how it trades it doesn't always put up a lot of green days in a row so I just can't chase it here but uh it is a it is a possibility for a long and back to the shorts, I found this other one, um, this Aaron's, it's like a furniture company, like brick and mortar, and it's testing right up against a major level that um, I drew that level like a long time ago. And uh, see that level there is a, is a very, very obvious level and it's trying to hold it here and um, it very well may not, you know, um, but we'll see like if it doesn't hold, that's a, that's a good short because it fits in with my um, my sector thesis on the on the housing market. And uh, you can see the volume has been there's been a lot of sellers um, this fall. So. And the fact that, well, see, it's already broken down, like, even though it, it held that level a lot, it did break down off of on the earnings, and it's just popped up back, you know, with everything else. Like I was saying, like, this may be one of the better ones where the weak stocks have popped up to get better short entries, you know. So uh, this one's really, I'll probably, I might just buy some uh, puts, even if it doesn't um, show weakness yet, because it could get a gap down, because it likes to gap down. Like it actually gaps down a lot. So you can see like all these gap downs. So yeah, it's done one, two, three. And one gap up. So yeah, the the technicals are really good here for the short and the fundamentals are too. Of course, that's just my read on what I've seen in the housing stocks in the housing market, but but yeah, it's a good that's a good short setup too. Like I put that one up kind of higher on my watch list here, and I'm still watching the hood. I think uh, that one's if it holds that level, it's a good long, but um, it's 
really a good short too if it breaks down because that was a key level there. The eight bucks has been around eight bucks has been pretty key. But I'm more I'm more interested in it as a long if it does actually get some momentum going back. But it looks like the um the reaction from the quarter was bad, so but I'm just kind of watching it, I'm not really uh, set on it. And Adobe is still strong too. And uh, it's actually some really good relative strength. So I may just end up putting this one on with some long, long data calls too, because I mean, the technicals are great. I mean, you look at the, it broke out of that like Darvis box there, that uh, it's a 52 week high breakout. The Darvis box is the Nicholas Darvis was a was like a he's a really famous or real well known dancer back in the um like the sixties, seventies, and he he started trading breakouts like these he actually called it the Darvis boxes, but it's basically just a channel and he would look at volume and um breakouts. And it was so simple back then because, you know, they didn't have, nobody looked at computers and you could just, uh, he found an edge just by looking at chart, just by using some technicals. So, but I think he's probably one of the, one of the reasons that, you know, people started trading breakouts. And they're usually not very reliable, like. Or they're not often as reliable as they you think they would be, but the uh, this chart's good, and the I've been looking at a lot of the images that the Adobe Adobe can create too, like on on Twitter and X, and the real the real the realistic skin texture is probably the best, like the Firefly, the Adobe Firefly, um, the latest one is really good. And uh, it's up there with the best, or the best. So, and uh, I found this other one too, this this BBD. It's, uh, did like a double top up there, topped out, and then it's uh, Brazilian, I believe, and It's kind of a no man's ter territory here, but I was kind of trying to get a, see if it would give a signal here. Like, uh, it may be, uh, I may try some puts on that. And that's about it really. Like, um, I'll just look at some, some indices here. The IWM was really trying to go there. It did like a, a triangle and um, it actually kind of looks like a failed triangle there. See how that, it had a little pennant there. So yeah, I think it looks like it wants to come back down to this, to this to channel support. So, and it rejected that level like that was a pretty major level that um that 180 so it looks like i think yeah it looks like it's going to come down the next like week to this uh to this level there that channel so like 170s like uh 172 maybe and uh The NASDAQ looks like it's threatening to break down off a of level two on. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the NASDAQ has a, 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 a trend trend break here too. Cause it's been, it's been up so many, it's been up so many days after so many, um, it's kind of getting short term overbought. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more pullbacks. And uh, 
KREs like the same as you know like IWM. Like it's closer to holding a major level there, but it's actually right on it. Let's make sure. Yeah, there it is. That level there, it's basically right on. So could go either way, but I think based on this action here, it's going to go lower with the IWM and retest that, test this channel uh, support there. And uh, so yeah, oil. And what else can we look at? I guess we could look at, sp at SPY, but um, I think it's probably the same as, yeah. It's actually looking even better than, than the other ones. Let's see, the future has probably opened up lower. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks, looks like it's time for a pullback too, you know, and it's still got that level to hit. It's not quite at breakout territory, but um, it's really tried to get there. So, yeah, I'd be surprised if there's not a battle up there at least, or a pullback, you know, it's not gonna go straight up. I mean, most likely it's not, but uh, yeah, so that's, that should do well, hopefully for my puts I've got, cause I've got a lot of puts on. And that's about it. Yeah, I, I actually do, I just looked at my portfolio. I do have some CWK puts that one of those um the office replay i think this one's the england the english one um i looked at so many of them like um i just kind of narrowed down the ones that were office that were primarily office space commercial you know commercial real estate and uh yeah i mean now that i look at these yeah it looks like these that's a channel there so looks like it's going to pull back the next couple days you know, best case and hit that and it doesn't fail. So yeah, it looks like we do some pullbacks here based on the technicals at least. I mean, I don't know if that, I don't know how the market's going to react to the NVIDIA quarter, but um, that's kind of a big deal because it's tech. But let me just see, see what it's doing after hours real quick. Oh yeah, it looks like it sold off. Wow. Yeah, Nvidia. Nvidia sold off after hours off of the off the earnings. And it's probably gonna hold that. Like sometimes stocks will fake out and they'll sell off, then go up the next day. Like um, Pepsi does that a lot. But but so far the market reaction to the earnings is negative, so it's down. So that kind of was set up with my thesis on these technicals too. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's looking good. So, so my plan is just to get some more, um, some more puts on tomorrow, and maybe even go crazy on these charging stock puts. You know, because the like, uh, that's probably still my that's still my best uh, one of my best thesis one of my best sector thesis. Looks like the, the red fin's right up against the major level too. Yeah, look at that. See, it's a good spot to get short, you know, if this fails. Cause it's got, you know, you got plenty, plenty uh, of room there for the downside. Cause like, you know, your target could be four, four, four fifty so, or so. But yeah, it looks like it's, it didn't like that level at all. And it did kind of the same kind of little triangle there. It's uh, it, uh, it broke down off of that. It really tried to go, but yeah, it looks weak too. It's kind of like, um, I guess a lot of these housing stocks are on the same kind of spot here. The rocket actually held levels better. Yeah, see, there's the XHB, and it really looks like uh, 
it actually looks like another bull flag, like like this consolidation there. That's what it's trying to do. So if that fails, like if this channel breaks down, then that setup's gone, so it's a better short. But obviously it could break out above um, that level there. So I'm just keeping an eye on these on these uh, this this channel these tight tight channels here. It's got a tight channel. So it's right there. And the top, it's right there. Looks like 82, 85, 82, 70. Yep. So, so we'll see how this plays out. And that, that'll probably give a lot of clarity on these other, other housing related stocks. But I wouldn't be surprised if it pulls back too, because it's up a lot. So yeah, that's it. I'll wrap it up there and um, have a great night and I'll catch you later.